chow, chow, chow. It's been a second. It's been a second. Now listen. So somebody on my channel asked me a question. It was about career advice, right? And I said I would make a video to answer her question. However, I think she needed an answer sooner rather than later. And y'all know me. I like to get to getting into a story. So she ain't had time for all that. So I gave her a quick answer. But the thing about it is I know that when one person has a question, usually other people have that same question or question similar. So that's why I like to make a video. Plus, it just gives us something to talk about, right? Something to talk about that some of y'all may care about. So let's talk about this. Her question was basically... I don't remember what her question was. <laughs> but it was basically about career advice. About She was looking to get into IT and she had some questions as to which direction to go in, right? Her specifically was comparing um, quality assurance and business intelligence. I think it was business intelligence. Let me see. Did I write it down? Yeah, business intelligence. Specifically. However, I have an answer that can be a little more broad for most of you, right? This is what I think. When it comes to taking a specific path, unless it's something that you're super passionate about, something that you feel in your core, in your gut, that is the right path for you to take, usually that's because we're getting um, wisdom from God or wisdom from, you know, our gut instincts telling us where to go, I would say keep it as general and as easy for you as possible. And only you will know what that is, right? This goes back to knowing thyself. So like I said, unless you know specifically, like there's a job that's already, you got your eye on, or they're looking for you, or they're telling you to do a certain thing, and they're telling you in order to get that, you need this, this, and this. I say, unless that's the path, I say, do what works for you. And the example I'm going to give you is what worked for me, right? So I'm in the computer field and that's what my degree is in. However, I did not get a, a degree in computer sciences. I didn't. Because I know me and I knew college, y'all. I knew college. What I knew is that I'm not that strong. Math is not my strongest thing. Math and science, they're not my strongest thing. I'm more of a history, English type person. Why? Because I have a great memory. I can memorize some facts. And I love telling a good story. And I always felt like with English and history, the arts, I always felt that you could reason your way to the truth. Right? Because what is the truth? The truth is the facts that you're going to throw around your answer and you can make that thing work for you more so than math because one plus one is always going to equal two. There's no way to, to BS that. There's no way to fudge them numbers, right? So you got to get it right. You got to know the formulas. You have to get it right. Same thing with science, right? And so therefore, I didn't want computer science because that was going to be a bachelor in, of science degree. So I chose, knowing myself, I chose the route of doing information systems technology. That's what my degree is. Information systems technology was a Bachelor of Arts degree, BA. So what that meant was while the, the BS degree and the BA degree was going to take a majority of the same classes, the BS was going to be more heavily focused in taking more math classes, more science classes. Ain't nobody want to do that. Ain't nobody want to do that. Whereas the Bachelor of Arts degree was going to have you take more arts classes, like classes in the arts, which was so silly, like music, art, appreciation, humanities, things like that, like stuff that nobody needs, but that's what we did. But with my degree, because I knew I was getting a degree so that I could get a job or keep jobs in the computer field... My emphasis was heavily in computer program languages and database technology. So I actually have an associate's degree in database technology. And then my Bachelor of Arts degree is in computer 
is an information systems technology, okay? So again, I picked the path that was the easiest for me and for my predilections. Is that a word? <laughs> my predispositions, my talents, my gifts, okay? So you have to think of that for yourself. I don't know any way of getting into the computer field, the computer, if you don't have a job already in this field, I don't know any other way outside of getting a degree or getting certifications. And I would say at least an associate's degree. I don't know. They might do things different these days. I don't know. This was the way I did it. And then plus I was in the military where that was my MOS. I don't even remember what MOS stands for. But that's what my job was in the military, computers, okay? So that gave me hands-on experience. Plus, I had some training to back it up as far as degrees go. I didn't have my degree when I got out of the military, but I did have classes toward my degree. And then I actually finished up my degree when I got a job that one of their benefit packets was they paid for education. And so I used that to finish up my education paired with the Montgomery GI Bill, which I tell everybody is not that they're paying for your education, it's supplementing your education. When you're in class versus half-time and full-time, they give you money every single month to... Um, offset the cost because it really doesn't cover the whole cost but the big come up is if you're in the military the big come up is as long as you're in the military schooling is free when you go to schools that the military has partnership programs with okay this life is all about the hack you got to know how to hack your life you got to know how to hack your life so that's what i would say the other thing, when she asks about, should I get into QA, quality assurance, or should I get into business intelligence? This is the other thing. They remix these titles every three to five years. They remix the titles, y'all. A few years ago, QA, quality assurance, used to be called software test engineer. That's what I am. But now, when I go out for jobs, they now say QA, quality assurance. But what that is is software testing, right? It's the fact that you're going to test applications, you're going to test code, you're going to test whatever a developer comes up with, you're going to check his homework, you're the grader on that homework. I, over the years, have always seen lots of positions for QA, software test engineering. I've always seen lots of positions for that. I'm not familiar with business intelligence. I'm not sure what that is because once again, it could be one of those remixed titles. I'm imagining perhaps it could be in a line with performance testing. I think I did Google the definition of business intelligence. I looked it up, but I, I didn't write it down. So I think it could be in a line with performance testing, which is when you're going to gather statistical data to support whatever the business needs how is it performing how are these applications performing how are these tools performing whatever tools we're using and then you also have specific tools to help you with that and it could also be a cross pollination with configuration management which are people who I would say they keep tabs on the systems. They keep tabs on builds, versions, things like that. They're going to keep the books clean as far as software goes, right? Over the years, I have seen CI, Configuration Management, or CM, Configuration Management, declining. The same thing with performance management. I've always seen companies or businesses or offices ask for that, but they never ever quite got those things. And they've always been other duties that can enroll or kind of incorporate what those people did. So I'm saying that I've never seen like huge heavy listings looking for those specific skill sets. I would say that if you are looking to get into QA, 
one of the things that can make you really stand out against the crowd is if you do get some experience or knowledge in automated testing okay everybody always asks for that and honestly a lot of people don't really know how to do it and it's almost like you have to be self-taught and of course how you're going to figure this out is you're just going to do some research. You're going to do your Googles. You're going to ask around in places that you know in your neighborhood, in your area, in your city to kind of see what are they using? What kind, what tools are they using? Because there's so much. So to me, it doesn't always make sense to learn one thing if that's not, if that's not, if that is not what's being used in your area right like there's a lot of people who use selenium then there's a lot of people who use catalan but just because you know selenium doesn't mean that when you get a job that they're just going to buy all the selenium equipment so that in all the selenium software so that you can use it no they're usually going to use what they already have in place and i always say that if you know how to do one thing you can kind of quickly teach yourself how to do something else how to use another tool right the other thing I would say that you can do to figure out which er which direction you should go in is look at the listings in your area. Go to, my mind is like working really slow right now. What are those things called? <laughs> job fairs. Go to job fairs and see what are they actually looking for? What are they actually hiring for? I've always been the type that once I see what the area needs, what the what the industry is asking for, that's what I would become. If I go to a job fair and I say, oh, well, they're looking for a lot of this, this, or that, I repackage myself to become this, this, and that. This means that you're going to customize your resume for that. You're not going to just keep the same generic resume. You're going to write your resume for the job, okay? And I would brush up on if it means I have to take some online courses. Um, there's a lot of online things like through Udemy. Ugh. I'll put a list because my mind is not thinking. But there's a lot of online learning tools that you can go for a very low fee and teach yourself some things at your own pace. Sometimes when you don't have the experience, it means that you might have to take a little pay cut, go in a little lower, but the bottom line is you're gathering experience. So on your next interview, you now have the experience to back up the knowledge. And you that's how you're gonna get your pay increase, okay? So that's what I would do. I always try to put myself in a position of where can I get the job? Because computers is not my passion. If it's yours, then great, because the more passionate you are about something the better but because computers is not my passion I'm willing to adapt myself and bend myself to whatever the industry needs the other thing that I've always found is that once you're in a job I always say get your foot in the door once your foot is in the door you can then walk around the room walk around the office this isn't literally but you can walk around and you can see what's missing, what's needed. And you can strengthen your skill sets to cater to that. That's one thing that I have always done. And that is actually how I got into testing. Because I think at the time I was a systems engineer. So I was doing my systems engineer work. But I remember that the test team at that time, they were swamped. And they could never finish their load and so I would jump in after my work was done and I would give them help I would help out I would jump in and I'd be like well, let me do this let me do this let me do that and that's how I became a tester and what happened was when I did that I realized like this junk is easy easy I'm always gonna get I, I want easy ain't nobody looking for a challenge at work my challenges come through life and travel that's why I find my challenges I don't need work to give me a challenge I need work to be easy and stress-free so um I think I had responded in that question like my history of things that I've done in the computer industry I have been a developer I have been database database management I have been a scrum master I have been like a bunch of different things. Like I said, systems engineer, help desk. Um, I have CCNA, which is actually expired. I have my A plus certification. I had different certifications depending on where I was working and what the need was at the time. Um, 
but I found that testing quality assurance has has been the easiest and I love not having additional responsibilities and duties for instance when you're a squad master you're almost middle management and you have to manage a team you have to manage the project you have to do all of this stuff I don't want to do that because I want to be on vacation being a tester there's more flexibility and wiggle room and that's what I prefer and that's what I love and like I said it's pretty easy it takes some deductive reasoning it takes some critical thinking skills um because it's a lot of trial and error and in documentation strong documentation skills um because you have to be able to defend your findings so yes yeah, so i find that to be very easy very straightforward you know what's being asked of you and it gives you more flexibility to live your life and to me living my life is so important having balance is so important that's it that is it that is it so talk to me down there if you have any questions let me know if you found this information this little bit of advice useful my little nieces and peers and sisters and cousins and best friends friends let me know um because we are here to win we are here to strive we are here to succeed the easiest way we can easy unless you want hard <laughs>